Okay, we have a Canon Rebel T3. Notice that's not the I. It has the solid mounted can uh, screen in the back. We turn it on. We get, it's very hard to see, but it's dark with kind of a, there we go, kind of a shatter to it. I have no idea how they managed to shatter the LCD without damaging or even scratching the glass casing behind it, but somehow they did. Um, long story short, we need to replace the LCD. You can see we have a replacement here. And we will go ahead and begin. Unlike consumer grade cameras, professional grade cameras are significantly better constructed on the inside. Also much easier to get into. So we've got a variety of screws around this. There are a couple of different sizes, so I like to lay them out in kind of a pattern that matches where they came out of the camera. So there are two down the right side, four across the bottom. And on this side, you flip open the cover, there are two underneath the cover and one above it. Okay, and that's all the screws out. Then it basically just pops open. It's not held on with any clips. It is a uh, cantilever in at the top, um, but as long as you lift it from the bottom of the side, it just lifts right out. It's got two data connections, two ribbons here. They are pretty short, so you don't want to get crazy and pull on this, but you can see the blue ribbon has a black clip that has to be flipped up from below and it's released automatically. You can see it pops right out of there. The other clip we have to flip down from above. And then it lifts right out. And now we do have the back off. Now I should point out the cover fell off in my hand from the side here. Uh, basically just hang on to that. You'll need it when you put it back together. Until then it can just set by itself. Okay, now to the actual culprit here. Inside the back, you can see there is a silver shield. We just need to take the four screws that hold the silver shield in place. I believe all four are the same length. So it's not super critical which one is where. Okay, and then there are two data ribbons. The larger of the two has a clip that we just need to flip upwards. There we go. The other one does not have a clip. It's spring loaded with just with its own tension. So it's got a small pinhole. You just need to put something tiny in that pinhole and slide it out and it comes right out. <clears throat> this one also has a pinhole to do the same thing. So now we've got that out. We can go ahead and remove this. This circuit board is just now it's actually more of a circuit ribbon, but it's just kind of set in there. It does have a small catch right there. And otherwise it's held in place by the screw that holds on the, the LCD screen. So this will be kind of loose when you take the screen out. Just make sure that you do get that catch back the way it ought to be before you screw everything back together. Um, and it does have a catch on the other side that doesn't really do anything, just sets there. Okay, so we've got our new screen. I'm going to wipe off with a cloth. No sense putting it together with dust on the inside of it. Now the shield is just kind of snapped onto the old screen. You just 
pop it out. It comes right out. Okay. You do need to snap this on before you lay it in there. Oh, doesn't help if you put it upside down though. Notice the ribbons are the opposite side from the large flanges. And as long as we've got everything straight there, the last couple specks of dust out, and do the same to the glass here. Now you do have to set this corner under first. It does have a little bit of a lip there. As you're looking at the screen right now, it'd be the lower left. And once it's laid in place, we can worry about the ribbons. So opposite of taking it out, you just use your, your small pointed tool to kind of guide it into place. This one does not want to quite line up right. Once you do get it lined up, you just push it in. This ribbon just does not want to go in there. Okay, so I finally got it lined up and we just push it in. <clears throat> it goes until there's just the tiniest bit of, of gold contact still visible. And I believe that's the same story on this one. Yeah, you can see there is just a little bit of gold contact still vi visible. So go ahead and lock that down. And we can start screwing things back together. Now we're ready to put the back back on. So these, as I mentioned before, they're a little short. So what I did is you just basically put your finger against it to hold it out so that you can do it from below. These also have the small pinholes so you can draw them in. Just kind of line it up, pull it snug with the pinhole, and then clip it down. And as with all ribbon cables, if it's not straight side to side, then you definitely don't have it in right. And this one, unfortunately, is even shorter. Actually, do this one from above. And this particular one has small wings on it, so it's gonna fight you right at the end. You have to kind of pop it over the wings on the edges of the ribbon in order to get it in all the way. Okay. So now that we do have it in all the way, we can go ahead and flip the clip down. And it's not quite straight. I need to get, make sure it's straight. Okay, that looks better. All right, so now we have both ribbon cables in place and locked. I'll go ahead and lay this on the back. As I mentioned before, it is slightly cantilever from the top, so you just need to make sure to set the top in first. Uh, we do need to get this cover back in place, it just sets in there. 
So you just kind of slide it in and you're good to go. So now we just need to get it screwed back together. And in case you do mix your screws around and you're you're unsure of which one is which, the longest screw here goes up here closest to the shutter button. The two shortest screws both go on either side of the tripod mount. Okay, we do have a battery in it. Let's turn her on and we have picture. I hope this video was helpful. If you have uh, comments, feel free to drop them off. Thank you for watching.